QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Create reports after second month of data input. Let's do it with Intuit's QuickBooks Desktop 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in QuickBooks Desktop, Get Great Guitars Practice File. We started up in a prior presentation going through the setup process we do every time. Maximize the home page in the view drop down. We got the hide icon bar, open windows list checked off, open windows open on the left. Reports drop down, company and financial profit and loss standard. Change the range from a 10123 to 123. Customize it and fonts and numbers changing to 14 okay yes and okay let's go to the reports drop down again company and financial this time the balance sheet standard we're going to customize that report with a change of the range 101123 to 123 fonts and numbers change the font bring it on up to 14 okay yes and okay that's the setup process we have been doing every time we've entered two months of data input at this point now we're going to be running month end reports for a few different reasons one to check our numbers if you're following along with the practice problem and two to think about the types of reports that we might be wanting to group together and provide say to customers or supervisors on a periodic basis possibly at the end of the month at the end of the quarter at the end of the year so we're gonna have our balance sheet we got our income statement and then we'll take a look at our transaction detail by date which can help us look at what we have done for the second month and drill down on any problems if you have any discrepancies now note first of all that now that we have two months of data input when we look at just the normal reports of a balance sheet and an income statement or profit and loss we all of a sudden have a lot more options because now we can look at a balance sheet that has two months. We can look at an income statement that has two months. We can compare the two months, having one minus the other and contrasting the two months. And you can imagine as we have more and more data in the system, if this, if this was the second year, then we can be comparing the current month to the prior month of the prior year, same month of the prior year, the current quarter to the same quarter of the prior year. So you can get quite complex in terms of the reports you might want to generate and you can generate a whole lot of reports even when we're looking at just variations of a balance sheet and a profit and loss as we start to have multiple periods so that's the first thing just want to point out here so what we're going to do is i'm just going to make a comparative of uh, january and february let's make the balance sheet a differential report and so what i'm going to do is go to customize up top and i'm going to say that i'm going to run this for the month of february only this is going to be 0201 uh, 23 to 022823 that would be for the month of february and then i'm going to say i would like to see the prior uh, period the change in dollar and the change in percent now this works great for a balance sheet because the balance sheet is as of a point in time so this is where we stood in the current month february and then the prior month january and this is the difference between where we stood between uh the two now note that this is a report that has all the information of the original balance sheet so i'm just going to use this report because it has that here but if you're providing these reports to a client you might want to run a simplified balance sheet so you could consider maybe i run a a simple balance sheet which might be a summary balance sheet and then I run a standard balance sheet and then I create comparative balance sheets. You're going to get a lot of reports, but it might be easier to first go from simple to more data. But I'm just going to use this one because it has everything in it. And then I'm going to customize it a little bit more. So let's customize up top and we'll go into the header and footer. 
let's say I'm going to get rid of the date prepared, time prepared, report basis. I might want to call it a balance sheet like comparison or maybe a comparative balance sheet, let's say. Comparative balance sheet. Uh, and then as of date might not be as relevant because it's going to have two dates on it. We'll put our name in the footer as has been our custom. And then on the fonts and numbers, we changed it to 14. Let's also put parentheses around it for external reports. And let's get rid of the pennies and say, OK. So there's the report that I'm going to be giving externally. If you're checking your numbers, you can go through here and check. You know, February will be the latest date that you can take a look at. Let's do the same thing for the profit and loss. We'll come back and actually print these. Uh, in, in a second here after we look at all the reports, I'm going to do the same thing for the profit and loss. But this time, I want to say January, February, and then have the total of January and February instead of the difference, because that report will give me everything in essence in one report. Again, you might want to give a simplified profit and loss, and then a normal profit and loss, and then a comparative profit and loss subtracting the two, and then possibly a month by month profit and loss or a quarter by quarter profit and loss depending on the dates you run it. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to go to the customize up top. We're going to go down here and say this is going to be from 010123 to 022823. Notice the two month time period this time. And then instead of going previous down here, I want to say that we want to have this by month right there by month, which is also right here by month. So that's useful on the income statement because now it gives me January, February and the total. Unlike the balance sheet, the balance sheet being where we stand as of a point in time, this one is what we earned or incurred through January through February. That's why we have the total column summing it up. The total column is the total of where we stand for the year to date at this point. That's why this report gives us, in essence, everything. But it's a little bit confusing to give to people sometimes because it's got a lot more data on it. So you might consider running simplified reports and then this report. But I'm just going to run this one. We're going to customize up top. We're going to then say header and footer. Let's call it an income statement. Income statement. Let's say comparative maybe comparative income statement or something like that. I'm going to get rid of the sub date or January through February. I'm going to say date prepared. Don't need that time report basis. Put our name on the footer and then fonts and numbers. Let's we put it to 14. Let's put the parentheses red and remove the pennies. So that's where we stand here. The total number on the outside is what you want to be comparing to. I'll also open up a trial balance, which is not usually something we give externally, but I want to give that for internal purposes. So you, can, so you have that on a hard copy, reports drop down, accounting and taxes, trial balance. Let's uh, change the date range from 010123 to 1231. Let's make it to 022823. I'll customize it and I'll say that we want to have this filters, header, footer. Let's get rid of the date, time, report, basis, name in the footer. And then we'll say fonts and numbers, negative numbers with parentheses, red and with uh, without. Let's keep the sense on this one because you might be checking this for, for your checking your numbers. Let's also increase the size of it. I'll bring it up to 14, not 16 to have it all the same size. OK, yes and OK. So there we have that. And now we'll also take a look at our transaction uh, detail report. Now, this is the one that you, you want to check your numbers here. And if something does not tie out, change your date ranges. See if it's a date issue. And then you can drill down on it. If everything was correct as of last month, meaning all your numbers were correct when you ran the report from January through January 31st, after the first month of data input and all of our transactions tie out, this one must be correct. Now you could, if you can't figure out a problem, you could try to run this report as of uh, January and compare that to the presentation that we did in January to see if you recorded anything or deleted anything from the prior month. That's why deleting prior month stuff becomes a problem. 
if your January trial balance still ties out to our tr January trial balance and all of your data input matches the next report we look at, you should end up at this point, all of your balances tying out to the trial balance here. So let's take a look at the transaction report, reports drop down, accounting and taxes. This is gonna be, let's look at the transaction list by date report. I'm gonna change the dates for just February. So it's gonna be 020123 to 022823. So this is, and let's customize it up top. Let's go to the headers and footers. I'll get rid of the date, time, and and then name on the footer. And then fonts and numbers. Let's bring this up. Let's try to bring it up to 12 as well to and say, okay, I think we did the rest of 14, but this is a, it's gonna be harder to fit on one page. So let's see what we have here. Note that you do wanna have consistency if you're gonna be printing the reports to have the same kind of uh, size of the font it's kind of nice just to make it look nice making it look nice is half the process to provoke or have a sense of confidence with whoever you're working with your clients okay so so note this is going to be giving us everything that we did by date so now we've got this information uh, by date in here notice that you might use this report as we're going to use it to kind of review your work as a supervisor reviewing somebody else's work to see what they actually did. And if we're billing somebody by transaction, this is a great report too. And we might actually provide it to the clients and say, look, this is how many transactions we entered. We told you we're gonna bill you if you're within this range of transactions so much monthly or whatever. So this, so what you wanna do is go through here. Now this gives you the, the type of, of transaction the name, the memo, and then the other account, which or the account and the split account. So this is the actual transactions that are impacting the accounts. The splits are kind of a problem here because that doesn't give you the other detail. That means that three accounts were, were used or at least there was multiple line items for the second account. So, so that's a little bit of a default with it. You could run a journal report, which gives you more detail on that but we're gonna run this one because it's a little bit smaller. So I'm just gonna scroll down. This is what we have here. If something is on here, but not on your side, you might wanna change the date range up top and see if it's a date issue. And, and then if something's on your side, but it's not here, then it might be that you messed up one of the transactions, entered it incorrectly, or that, uh, that you entered it twice or something like that. You could remove the transaction. And once again, if your prior trial balance ties out for January and all of your transactions here match, then your ending trial balance for February should match. Okay, so we'll print these things out. If I was to provide these to clients, then I would want to give it to them in like a, a cloud drive maybe or a zipped file uh, that has them in order, make it as easy for them to open. So we're gonna save them as a PDF and then we'll also save them as a, a P, one PDF by using Excel as we did in the end of January. So I'll do it a little bit faster because we've seen it before. Let's start with the balance sheet. I'm gonna go print. We're gonna save it as a PDF. I'm gonna put this into my, my folder that I set up here. Let's see, we'll put it into the QuickBooks and we got the GGG reports and these are gonna be for the reports. I'll make a new folder for 02.28.23. And then I'll go into that one and I'll put the reports here. This is gonna be a comparative balance sheet. So comparative balance sheet. You might wanna number them too, if you want them to be opened in a certain order, but I'm gonna say save that. And then I'll go to my profit and loss, which will be the next one I usually think about. Let's print that one, print, save as a PDF. And this is gonna be then a comparative income statement. If I misspell anything, then, I mean, you won't be surprised or anything because I'm going kind of fast here. Although I would probably misspell stuff even if I went extremely slow. But in any case, whatever, print the trial balance, save. This is gonna be the trial balance. And then I should probably put the date on them as well, but I'm gonna keep it here. And then the transaction report, 
let's say print this one, save as a PDF, and this will be the transaction list by date. Now this one in particular, we might wanna you know, double check and do a preview on it, like to make sure it fits on one page wide, it doesn't. So that's a pretty ugly report right here if I give it to someone like that. So, so if I can't fix that within uh, QuickBooks, because I, I could say fit to one page wide, like this fit report to one page is high, fit to one page wide, but that often changes the font size so sometimes it's kind of nice to export them to Excel in that case. So that's what I'll do here. Let's export it to Excel and try to get everything on one PDF. So right now, if I check out what we have, let's check out what we have thus far, shall we? If I go into the, the data files reports, we've got then the reports for January and I could give these Hold on a second. We've got the reports for February. Now I could give these to somebody one at a time like this in an email, but I might want to zip them. So I'm gonna right click, let's make another folder. I'm gonna call this 0101.01, say 01.31.23 uh, reports. I'm going to drag these into them and I should fix that transaction detail report, but I'm going to put these in here and then right click and zip that one. So I could say compress it and now I can attach this to an email. That's one way I might do it or I might put it into a cloud drive. Now I'm going to use Excel to try to put all of the PDFs on one file and adjust for some of those. Uh, formatting things like making something landscape and try to make it as nice as possible that way. So let's try to do it again. I'm going to go to the balance sheet, Excel, create new Excel worksheet. So I'm going to put them all in an Excel worksheet and then print them all on one PDF using Excel. I'm going to put it into a new workbook, a new workbook. It should open up Excel. Of course, you need Excel in order to do this type of process. I'm gonna to go to the second tab usually, and then back to the first tab and see if it fits on one page. Uh, it does not. So I'm gonna say, what can I do here? I can I could try to move this stuff over. Maybe I don't need column A. I'm gonna first try to make it fit on one page portrait. And if it doesn't, then I'll go landscape. So I'll say, can I move this over maybe? Get rid of column A, clicking on column A, right click, delete. I don't need these other skinnies. So I'm gonna hold down control, select in the skinnies, right click on the skinnies and delete. And so that's pretty close. Maybe I can just squish this up a bit. Squish, squish. Oh, come on, give me a break. So that's still kind of cutting into it a bit, but I'm gonna keep that for now. I'm gonna say file, let's save as put this on my desktop under the QuickBooks, put this into the, to the GGG reports and the, the January reports. And this will be once again, the 01. No, these aren't January reports. I'm in February, February. These are once again, the 02.28.23 reports. And I misnamed it here. Oh, reports. We'll say save it. Boom. I'm going to change the dates for just February. So it's going to be 020123 to 022823. So this is and let's customize it up top. Let's go to the headers and footers. I'll get rid of the date time and and then name on the footer and then fonts and numbers. Let's bring this up. Let's try to bring it up to 12 as well to and say, okay, I think we did the rest of 14, but this is a, it's gonna be harder to fit on one page. So let's see what we have here. Note that you do wanna have consistency if you're gonna be printing the reports to have the same kind of uh, size of the font. It's kind of nice just to make it look nice. Making it look nice is half the process to provoke or have a sense of confidence with whoever you're working with your clients. 
Okay, so so note this is going to be giving us everything that we did by date. So now we've got this information um, by date in here. Notice that you might use this report as we're going to use it to kind of review your work as a supervisor, reviewing somebody else's work to see what they actually did. And if we're billing somebody by transaction, this is a great report too. And we might actually provide it to the clients and say, look, this is how many transactions we entered. We told you we're going to bill you if you're within this range of transactions so much monthly or whatever. So this, so what you want to do is go through here. Now this gives you the, the type of, of transaction the name, the memo, and then the other account, which or the account and the split account. So this is the actual transactions that are impacting the accounts. The splits are kind of a problem here because that doesn't give you the other detail. That means that three accounts were, were used or at least there was multiple line items for the second account. So, so that's a little bit of a default with it. You could run a journal report, which gives you more detail on that but we're going to run this one because it's a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to scroll down. This is what we have here. If something is on here, but not on your side, you might want to change the date range up top and see if it's a date issue. And, and then if something's on your side, but it's not here, then it might be that you messed up one of the transactions, entered it incorrectly, or that, uh, that you entered it twice or something like that. You could remove the transaction. And once again, if your prior trial balance ties out for January and all of your transactions here match, then your ending trial balance for February should match. Okay, so we'll print these things out. If I was to provide these to clients, then I would want to give it to them in like a, a cloud drive maybe or a zipped file uh, that has them in order, make it as easy for them to open. So we're gonna save them as a PDF and then we'll also save them as a, a P, one PDF by using Excel as we did in the end of January. So I'll do it a little bit faster because we've seen it before. Let's start with the balance sheet. I'm gonna go print. We're gonna save it as a PDF. I'm gonna put this into my, my folder that I set up here. Let's see, we'll put it into the QuickBooks and we got the GGG reports and these are gonna be for the reports. I'll make a new folder for 02, dot 28.23 and then I'll go into that one and I'll put the reports here this is going to be a comparative balance sheet so comparative balance sheet you might want to number them too if you want them to be opened in a certain order but I'm going to say save that and then I'll go to my profit and loss which will be the next one I usually think about let's print that one print save as a PDF. And this is going to be then a comparative income statement. If I misspell anything, then I mean, you won't be surprised or anything. Because I'm going kind of fast here. Although I would probably misspell stuff even if I went extremely slow. But in any case, whatever, print the trial balance, save this is going to be the trial balance. And then I should probably put the date on them as well, but I'm going to keep it here. And then the transaction report, let's say print this one, save as a PDF. And this will be the transaction list by date. Now this one in particular, we might want to, you know, double check and do a preview on it. Like, to make sure it fits on one page wide, it doesn't. So that's a pretty ugly report right here if I give it to someone like that. So so if I can't fix that within uh, QuickBooks, because I, I could say fit to one page wide, like this fit report to one page is high, fit to one page wide, but that often changes the font size. So sometimes it's kind of nice to export them to Excel in that case. So that's what I'll do here. Let's export it to Excel and try to get everything on one PDF. So right now, if I check out what we have, let's check out what we have thus far, shall we? If I go into the, the data files reports, we've got then the reports for January and I could give these, hold on a second. We've got the reports 
for February. Now I could give these to somebody one at a time like this in an email, but I might want to zip them. So I'm going to right click. Let's make another folder. I'm going to call this 0101 dot 01 let's say 01 dot 31 dot uh, 23 reports I'm going to drag these into them and I should fix that transaction detail report but I'm going to put these in here and then right click and zip that one so I could say compress it and now I can attach this to an email that's one way I might do it or I might put it into a cloud drive now I'm going to use Excel to try to put all of the PDFs on one file and adjust for some of those uh, formatting things like making something landscape and try to make it as nice as possible that way. So let's try to do it again. I'm going to go to the balance sheet, Excel, create new Excel worksheet. So I'm going to put them all in an Excel worksheet and then print them all on one PDF using Excel. I'm going to put it into a new workbook, a new workbook. It should open up Excel. Of course, you need Excel in order to do this type of process. I'm going to go to the second tab usually, and then back to the first tab and see if it fits on one page. Uh, it does not. So I'm going to say, what can I do here? I can I could try to move this stuff over. Maybe I don't need column A. I'm going to first try to make it fit on one page portrait. And if it doesn't, then I'll go landscape. So I'll say, can I move this over maybe? get rid of column A, clicking on column A, right click, delete. I don't need these other skinnies. So I'm going to hold down control, select in the skinnies, right click on the skinnies and delete. And so that's pretty close. Maybe I can just squish this up a bit. Squish, squish. Oh, come on, give me a break. So that's still kind of cutting into it a bit, but I'm going to keep that for now. I'm going to say file. Let's save as, put this on my desktop under the QuickBooks, put this into the, to the GGG reports and the, the January reports. And this will be once again, the 01. No, these aren't January reports. I'm in February, February. These are once again, the 02.28 dot 23 reports. And I misnamed it here. Oh, reports. We'll say save it. Boom. Let's see if I can change the name of this one. This should be rename. Let's make this, not that one. This should be. Okay.